Hey guys, I'm Nate. Welcome back to the workshop. In the past, Grant has shown you a pretty cool experiment that he came up with that involved microwaving a large glass jar with a little bit of water in it until it was really full of steam. Pouring out the boiling water and lowering the glass jar down into some ice cold water causes the water to violently rush in and fill the entire container. We're going to try and replicate his experiment and then expand on that idea with a couple other experiments of making a vacuum in a jar without using a pump. To start off, let's put a little bit of water in our jar and then microwave it for a couple minutes so it's nice and hot. Take our glass bottle, pour out that and... So it's still filling with water, but because it took me so long to walk over here from the microwave, not giving us the explosive result we're hoping for. It's still pulling in quite a bit of water though. Clearly, we need to act faster, so let's move our setup to the kitchen and try again there. Wow! <laughs> yeah, that did a pretty good job of filling up with water right there. That was pretty incredible. I mean, look how full this bottle is. That is a very full bottle. And so all of that water is displacing steam that was inside this bottle. So we can see how much the steam shrinks as it cools down. That's a lot, that is crazy. There's another method of creating a low pressure inside a jar like this that you may have seen before and we're gonna try and replicate again. It involves lighting a fire inside the jar and plugging up the top. To get our fire inside the jar, let's take a strip of paper towel, light that on fire with a lighter, and then drop it down into the jar. At that point, I'll cover the top and we'll see what happens. I took one of these gauges that we use on our vacuum chamber to measure the negative pressure inside our container, and I rigged it up so I should be able to just pop it down on top of this jar, and if there's any negative pressure that forms inside it, we should be able to get a good measure of it. They really start catching. As the flame burns out, we should begin to see our needle starts to rise. There it goes. That is not a lot of rise we got on our needle. We are up to about ooh, two and a half, maybe three inches of mercury. That's a pretty small result, but it is lower pressure. Let's see if it's enough to lift our jar. It is. It is enough to lift our jar by. Put the pressure back in. That's kind of cool. You watch the swirling air inside there. Let's try and get our piece of paper towel out of the jar. That's the fun part. A popular demonstration of what happens when you create the lower pressure inside the jar is to see if you can take a hard boiled egg, which does not fit through the neck of the jar, light the fire down inside and have the lower pressure pull the egg through the neck of the jar inside the bottle. Let's try and see if that will work. Oh, so we've got air expanding inside there from the heat. Now as it burns all the air up, thunk! Beautiful, that just pulled it right down into the jar. That worked great. So now we have a jar full of smoke and an egg that we can't get out because it doesn't fit out of the neck. Hmm. There's a whole lot of remnants of our burned paper towel inside the jar and I'm filling with water. And in addition to clearing out the burned paper towel, the water rising up also does a great job of displacing all of the oxygenless smoke that's filling our jar. So it should be easier to do this experiment again after we pour out the water. Or we'll try and pour out the water and the egg will plug it up. Oh, it did. Well, there's an egg plugging up our jar. It's a pretty good plug right there. In an attempt to get the egg out, I'm gonna see what happens if I pour a little bit of liquid nitrogen into our jar, then flip it upside down, hopefully keeping the nitrogen behind the egg so the nitrogen will expand, increase the pressure, and push the egg out. This might not work at all. Oh, it did! That worked great. Now we have a jar full of nitrogen gas as well. Our egg a little worse for the wear, being sucked into a bottle and then blown back out of the bottle. So that worked pretty well, and now I wanna try combining the two ideas. I wanna put a little bit of water in our bottle, microwave it up so it's nice and hot again, and then use our pressure gauge on the bottle as we lower it down into our ice water to see how much of a vacuum we pull just by shrinking the steam instead of replacing it with the ice cold water. 
Once our microwave is finished cooking, I'll take it out, pour out the water. I'm going to add one large marshmallow down inside it because marshmallows in a vacuum are always fun. And then I'm gonna put our pressure gauge on top of the bottle and lower it down into our ice water. Pour that out, fit a marshmallow in. It doesn't have a lot of spare space. There we go. Now we get our negative pressure gauge onto our container and start lowering it down into the ice water to cool down all of the steam inside the bottle. You can already see how much the gauge is raising. And if you look down into that bottle, you can also see our marshmallow is starting to grow. Our marshmallow is also very soft because it's in contact with our very hot glass. Woo, wow. We are already at 21 inches of mercury. A pretty big marshmallow. This is certainly a less convenient way of making a vacuum chamber than with our actual vacuum pump, but it is working. All right, I think we've about hit our limit. With our vacuum pump at this altitude, we can usually pull about 26, maybe 26 and a half. So this is pretty seriously empty. There is almost nothing except that marshmallow inside this jar. Here is an unexpanded marshmallow and our heated by the glass and expanded marshmallow. You can see a pretty good size difference there. Now to break the seal, I'm just gonna pull up on the rubber a little bit and it should be able to pop right off. Smushed. Now it's just like a wrinkled, melted husk of a marshmallow. There is one more thing I'm going to try that's pretty similar. I'm going to wash out this marshmallow, add a little bit of water, nuke this thing in the microwave again, and once it's really hot, I'll take it out and then I'm gonna see how many of these eggs I can get it to suck down into the jar as the pressure drops, cooling it down in our water. In an effort to get our jar to pull as many eggs inside of it as we can, I've got a PVC tube that we should be able to fit our hard boiled eggs down into in a line. When the jar is ready, I should be able to flip the PVC tube up, put it over the neck of the jar, and then lower it down into the water. And hopefully, as the steam cools off, and it forms a vacuum inside the jar, it will pull the eggs in one after another. I've never tried this before though, so we'll see if it works. There we go, we can see the eggs backed up to the pipe. I think we've got 10 eggs in this PVC pipe. Hopefully, we can get 10 eggs sucked down into our jar. Uh oh. <laughs> I think this might be like the last one. That's it. That's it. Well, good news and bad news. Uh, bad news is we shattered our jar. The thermal shock, I guess, it was so hot and then being dropped into the ice water, that just broke it right up. But before it completely fell apart, we had enough low pressure to pull 10 eggs through our tube into the jar. That was pretty entertaining. Oh, that worked great. <laughs> oh, I bet that's never been done before. Creating vacuum inside of a glass jar with a couple unorthodox methods. We are able to drop a piece of burning paper towel down inside and with our vacuum gauge we saw that we pulled about 4 inches of mercury, which isn't a ton, but it was enough that we were able to lift the jar with it. That low pressure also had enough strength to suck a hard boiled egg down inside of our jar which was entertaining to get back out using a little bit of liquid nitrogen poured in behind the egg. We also used boiling water and steam and then cooled it off in ice water to get the change in volume from the steam being fully expanded to contracting down a lot. We were able to get a lot of low pressure using that method. We pulled almost 25 inches of mercury just by cooling our jar down in some ice water. That's not a full vacuum, but it is very low pressure. I thought it was very entertaining taking our jar full of hot steam, lowering it down into some ice water with a tube of eggs above it, and they all just got sucked down into it. It was really entertaining. I love that noise. It just went thup, 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 pulling them down in. We did unfortunately have our jar shatter as a result of the change in temperature from the boiling heat to the ice cold water. So unfortunately, we were not able to pour liquid nitrogen into the whole jar full of 10 eggs, turn it upside down and have it just shoot them all back out, which is something I wanted to do. And we might have to try that again in the future. Eggs are cheap, steam is cheap. Overall, 
It's a really cool experiment that shows what kinds of vacuum pressure you can get without owning a vacuum pump. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're not a subscriber yet, just hit the bomb to get in the club. If you missed our last video or want to see it again, just click up here at the top. Click down there if you want to see what the internet thinks that you should watch next. That's it for now. Have fun, be safe, and see you tomorrow.